uh, thank you for holding this hearing today. I think it's a really, really important one uh, as it focuses on the maritime drug interdiction issues, which is one element of our strategy that we all need to deal with an issue that's uh, impacting every state in America, and that's the unprecedented drug crisis, especially with regard to fentanyl that's impacting every state. It's interesting um, and sad from my perspective, but my state in many ways is the furthest from the southern border, and yet um, we are facing an unprecedented uh, fentanyl crisis in Alaska. In 2023, opioids killed more Alaskans than ever before. Drug over overdose, overdose deaths in Alaska, the vast majority of which were fentanyl related, increased by more than 40% in Alaska, the largest percentage increase of any state in the country. And uh, to combat this, I recently launched an initiative in my state with our governor called the One Pill Can Kill campaign. The point of this campaign is to go out to all Alaskans, especially our youth, to warn them of the threat of taking unprescribed pills. Counterfeit pills are incredibly difficult to spot and contain, can contain deadly amounts of fentanyl. We're seeing this across every state in the country. I do have to say, although we're focused on maritime issues here, the failed open border policies of the Biden-Harris administration have accelerated this disaster. Homeland Security Investigations estimates that Mexican cartels, some of which are actually operating in Alaska, in Alaska villages, the notorious Sinaloa cartel is in my state right now, they are now making $13 billion a year smuggling illegal immigrants into the U.S. 26 times what they made in 2018. The mass migration that the Biden-Harris administration has encouraged and allowed has caused a humanitarian crisis, national security crisis, health crisis, and drug overdose crisis. This crisis is also driven by illegal drug trafficking by transnational criminal organizations, or TCOs, as was already mentioned, some of which is being done by maritime means. Last week, Vice Admiral Halsey, the military deputy commander of Southern Command, testified in front of the Armed Services Committee that, quote, transnational criminal organizations remain the primary threat to stability in the entire region. He also said these TCOs, these cartels, get at least one third of their revenue from drug trafficking. Beyond drug smuggling, the TCOs are engaged in arms trafficking, money laundering, human trafficking, and many other horrific crimes. Interdicting drug on the high seas is a key to combating the flow of illegal drugs into the United States. And I want to thank the Coast Guard again for all their great work and other various law enforcement agencies and partner nations around the hemisphere who do this crucial work. It's imperative. However, our challenges are evolving and we must adapt accordingly. In the 2024 National Drug Threat Assessment, the DEA administrator highlighted the Mexican cartel's reliance on companies in China to supply the pill, presses, and precursor, precursor chemicals needed to manufacture fentanyl that they are using to poison Americans. I recently co-sponsored in the Senate with Senator Tim Scott the Fend Off Fentanyl Act, which was signed into law. This legislation will help stop the flow of deadly fentanyl by directing the Department of Treasury to use economic national security tools to choke off the profits of the Chinese precursor manufacturers and Mexican cartels that push fentanyl across the border. It will help, but until we secure the border, it will not be enough. Finally, Madam Chair, I want to mention one other thing. The Trump administration, the Biden-Harris administration have all announced uh, agreements that they achieved with the communist dictator Xi Jinping that he would reduce the flow of precursor chemicals from China into the United States. As usual, the Chinese Communist Party 
doesn't keep its commitments to the United States, whether to the Trump administration or the Biden administration. This is what some of us call promise fatigue, where the Chinese consistently commit at the highest levels of government. Think about Xi Jinping and President Obama in the Rose Garden, where Xi Jinping said, we're not going to militarize the South China Sea. They lie. Great powers don't lie, but China does lie all the time, and particularly when it comes to fentanyl. The Congress of the United States in a bipartisan way is tired of hearing the Chinese making agreements with Republican administrations, Democratic administrations on fentanyl and never keeping their word. The Chinese, the Chinese Communist Party is engaging in chemical warfare against the United States. We are tired of it. Hear that, Xi Jinping and the rest of you Communist Party hacks. We need to hold their feet to the fire. Finally, I just want to mention the Coast Guard. Again, you have the biggest fans in the world in my state, the great state of Alaska, with regard to the Coast Guard. We are committed to a recapitalization, a continued recapitalization of the fleet to provide you the resources and the ability to undertake this and the other numerous missions you undertake every single day to save lives in Alaska, in Wisconsin, and everywhere else across the United States. So I want to thank the Coast Guard, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you need from the Congress to be able to do this mission, this critical mission, um, in a more effective way than you can be doing it now. Thank you, Madam Chair.